Hello, my name is Ben Brownlee from Boris Effects. What do you do when your Mocha data is not working in After Effects? Some users think that once they've created the perfect tracking data in the Mocha AE interface, we're all good to go. But here are six common mistakes users can make when using Mocha AE and how we can avoid these basic pitfalls. Number one, not creating the track data. This is by far the most common step new users miss. Before you can use any of that tracking information, Mocha AE has to know which track you're interested in. So hit the Create Track button first. In some older versions of the Mocha plugin, you have to hit the process cog next to the layer name, even if you only have one layer. In newer versions, it's already active and you can just hit the OK button. If you have more than one layer created, as in this example, you'll want to make sure that the process cog is on the one you want to use, either by clicking on the cog itself or simply on the layer name. Check that the data is loaded by scrubbing the timeline and the values will update. Your track mocha surface will be represented by these animated nulls. Number two, applying the track data to the wrong layer. In older versions of Mocha AE, we copied and pasted data. Now we can create track data and apply to layers without jumping back and forth between applications. Before selecting the Apply Track button, you need to tell the Mocha plugin where to put the data. By default, it won't be connected to any layer. So hitting the Apply button won't do anything. If your track is designed to match the movement of an element within the shot, for example, a screen replacement, the target layer should be the element you want to insert. If you're doing stabilization, you just have to invert the track data, then choose the video layer itself, like so. We track the back wall, and now we're stabilized around that wall. Job done. Mistake number three, using the wrong type of track data. There are many different ways you can use the same tracking data, but basically it breaks down to two main areas, transform data or corner pin data. Transform data will apply a single point of position data, plus rotation and scale, as shown in the data here. If you don't want some of this, for example, you only need the position data, don't be afraid to turn off and reset the other properties before you apply the track. Corner pin data is most commonly used for screen or logo inserts and applies four points of data to the target clip. Generally, most users use the corner pin that supports motion blur option. When you choose this option, you'll get an animated corner pin effect plus extra transformation keyframes to drive the motion blur. For more details on different AE tracking data options, please check out this video linked in the description. Mistake number four, forgetting to adjust the surface. In the Mocha AE interface, the temptation is to judge the quality of the track by looking at the shape you drew. If this is steady, then surely the tracking must be steady too. This isn't the way to do it. You want the surface, which is the actual representation of our track data. Turn on the surface tool by clicking on this blue button here, or here in the Essentials workspace. And this is the data you will see when you create track data back in After Effects. If you're doing an insert, then you want to reposition these corner points to the corners of the area that you're filling. If you're more interested in the transform data, then you just have to make sure that this center point is positioned in the right place. The other corner points don't matter to you. Learn more about the surface in this video, also linked in the description below. Number five, tracking drift caused by mismatched resolution sizes. Now you have the perfect surface set up, why doesn't it look right when I apply the tracking data to my insert graphic? This happens a lot when you're starting out, and it's because in After Effects, your insert's resolution has to match the resolution of the video you tracked. My video is 1920 by 1080 pixels, as is my comp. And as you can see here, my insert is not. To get the tracking data to line up properly, we have to force the insert to match 1920 by 1080. And it's easy to do this with a technique called pre-composing or pre-comping for short. I right click on my insert, go down to pre-compose and a new window pops up. We're gonna choose the second option, move all attributes into the new composition. I'll also check the bottom option to open the new composition. This comp is automatically the same size as our master composition. The insert looks quite small in here. So let's fit it to fill the whole screen. Right click on the clip, transform, fit to comp. 
and that stretches it up to fill the entire frame. Now it looks pretty weird, but that's normal. We pop back into the main comp, apply our corner pin data once more, and everything fits. Perfect. Mistake number six. More tracking drift caused by mismatched resolution sizes. There is an extra wrinkle if the main comp isn't the same size as the tracked video. In this example, we have a UHD source scaled down into an HD composition. The basic steps are the same as the previous example. Right click on the insert, pre-compose, and move all attributes into the new composition. Open the pre-comp, and if we check the composition settings, this comp is the same size as our master comp. We need to match this resolution to the main footage we tracked instead. In our example, the footage is Ultra HD, so let's make the pre-comp that size too. Now we do the fit to comp, back to the main comp and apply the corner pin data. This looks better, but it's still off. And that's because we need to match the transform we've done on our tracked clip. See that the scaling is set to 50% on our tracked footage, fitting it into the HD composition. Well, let's do the same thing with our insert layer. Scale to 50%. It all fits. It's worth noting that this workflow will not work if you choose corner pin supports motion blur, because that puts scaling keyframes down too. So you have to choose another option. The Mocha plugin will automatically configure itself to the size of the footage you give it. So if we had pre-composed our original clip before tracking it in Mocha, then Mocha would have recognized it as an HD clip, and we would simply have to follow the rules from mistake number five. But however you do it, the tracked video and the insert must be the same size to match the tracked movement. These are the most common finger trouble issues you might encounter when applying tracking data in the Mocha AE or Mocha Pro plugin inside After Effects. The important thing to remember is you can't break anything. The worst case scenario is that you have to delete any applied data and go through this checklist. Have I created my tracking data in the plugin? Have I applied it to the right layer? Is it the right type of tracking data? Is my surface set correctly in the Mocha interface? Are my tracked footage and insert clips the same resolution? And finally, am I sure my tracked footage and insert clips are the same resolution? Answer these and you've fixed the most common problems people face when applying tracking data for the Mocha AE plugin effect. And you're ready to move on with your shot. My name is Ben Brownlee. If you've noticed any other mistakes that aren't included in this list or things that you struggle with in Mocha AE, then leave a comment below. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit the like button and subscribe to the Boris FX YouTube channel. If you have some ideas about more tutorials you'd like to see in the future, also hit me up with a comment. And don't forget to visit borisfx.com to stay up to date with the latest news and training for all the Boris FX products.